girls, this is Karen again with uh, Mama Scrapbooks for part three of our easy stitching on paper. Um, when we were last in part two, I was showing you how you could easily take any punch you have and punch out your design and use that as a paper applique. So what I did was I went ahead and I put my flower down and I stitched. I put a hole on the background, a hole on the ac actual um, punch. And I show I wanted to show you here. I'm going to move this up a little bit so you can actually see the three stitches that I did. I also was showing you how you could do a cross stitch and basically make a box design. And you're going to just do an X with your stitches. Okay. Um, the next thing I want to show you that I showed on part one was how to do beading um, in your stitching to incorporate beads on your stitches. And as you know, I have tons of beads. Move some of my beads in here. Um, what I've done here is I've just made simple stitches. Just uh, made a straight line. You can use your ruler. You're going to need two holes for each bead. And made my line. I've come up from the back. As you can see, I've already done four here, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. My thread is coming up from the back. I'm going to put my bead on. And then I'm going to stitch down into the paper. And then I'll align my bead and make sure it stands up straight. It is that simple. You can follow any border um, or any design. And one last thing I want to show you is how to actually freehand your stitching. Now these products with the stencils and the stitches, uh, easy stitch stencils, the basils, all of these are great. But honestly, I don't use them all that much. I do a lot of freehand. And say I wanted to use some of those awesome flowers that are out there. So I would just take my pencil, make a vine design, take my piercer, paper pierce about every fourth inch along that design. If you get off a little bit, don't worry about it. Your stitches are pretty forgiving in that you can see that it's a constant stitch. And I would just backstitch this design. Now what I would do, let me grab a flower. After I have that stitched, I would just go ahead and glue a flower in. Maybe put a bead or a brad on the inside of my flower. And I have a whole new way of doing design work on any of my layouts. One last thing I also want to show you is I found this at Hobby Lobby. No, Michael's. It's Martha Stewart's. She calls it Baker's Twine. And it's a little bit thicker than the DMC floss, like the two strands. But it's got six colors in it. I think it's like $3.99. So you might check that out. You can use other things to stitch with other than just the DMC floss. You could use the Baker's Twine. You could also use, I know a lot of us have a ton of uh, fibers. Just remember, if you use, use one of your fibers, you may need a little bit larger hole for your um, paper piercing. That's when this handy dandy darning needle would come in really handy. It has, it has a bigger diameter than my, than my paper piercer. So it's going to leave a bigger hole. And that's where my fibers would have the room to move around. Um, when you're pulling your threads through, don't yank. You will get knots on the back. Just simply turn it over and do what you can to get rid of that knot. If you can't get rid of a knot, don't worry about it. Take your scotch tape tape your knot down, trim your thread, 
tape it back down and that end down and start with your next hole. Very simple. Don't get don't get uh, upset if you if you do have a knot or something like that. The back is not going to be seen. As you can see, I've got tape every place. I've taped when I started. I've taped when I've ended. So the back is going to kind of look like that anyway. So anyway, I hope that I have just inspired you to get your DMC flosses out, get your beads out. Um, you're only limited by how much floss you have and your imagination. So for now, this is Karen with Mama Scrapbooks. So girls, get to stitching. And I will see you next time on Mama Scrapbooks.